Hey, what's up YouTube? Today, what I'm gonna teach you is how to do shading. So all the shading techniques that you need to know to be able to do a good tattoo. I'm gonna show you how to do this on an actual live tattoo. I picked out a flower design, so let's get into it. Okay, YouTube, so you can see that I have a design prepared to be able to go through all the shading techniques. Now, I chose a flower just because you could kind of use uh, every shading technique just in a single tattoo. Um, some design, designs you wanna to stick to you know, either whip shading, pendulum shading, depending on the style, you know, if you're doing traditional, you want to stick with whip shading the whole way through because you kind of want those, you know, to be able to clearly see all the pepper shading in the tattoo. Awesome. So if you're interested in more videos like this, um, explaining what I'm doing, going into detail about how to do them, um, all you got to do is like and subscribe. And even if you want to comment down below, just so I know that this is helping you out um, and I know to make more videos like this in the future. Cool. So what we're going to get into today is going over the different techniques on how to shade a tattoo. There are quite a few. There are four different ones you could use. And like I said a minute ago, there's pepper shading, which to do that, you'll be putting the mag into the actual skin and just kind of whipping it out or fake skin, depending on what you're using. So, you know, kind of getting used to this method right here. Now, the other one would be the pendulum method. So what you would do in that is instead of just putting it in the skin and whipping forward, you'll be kind of kind of like a brushing motion, just you know, slowly building up your tones with this type of motion right here. After that, we're going to go into the cross hatching, which, you know, it's not necessarily a method, but it is definitely a way to shade. So you will be going one way with your shading and then turning your mag and then going another way. What's that going to do is kind of smooth out all the dots in the skin and build up more tone because going one way is going to make your dots just, you know, a singular place. So in traditionals, that's why you could see, you know, all the little dots, but going this way as well, kind of saturates it a little bit more and just makes it a little bit more uh, clean and kind of transitions a little bit better. And then the last one we're going to get into would be the brush shading or light shading or feather shading, depending on, you know, what you want to call it. But what we're gonna do with this, it's kind of like the same with pendulum shading, but we're just barely going into the skin, just lightly brushing in there. What you use this for is just a couple places to where you want a little bit more shading, um, but you don't want it super powerful. So just going into the skin and just lightly brushing it in there. Awesome, so as you could clearly see with all of these different techniques, it's just a matter of how you're really moving with your hand. So the hand motion is a big deal. You know, some you're gonna do this, some you're going to do this. Um, so just getting used to these motions so it will make it a whole lot easier on you when you actually start tattooing. Awesome, so what I'm gonna be using for this tattoo is an 11 curve mag. With these tiles, you could really use curve mags for everything. So I definitely recommend if you are first starting out, just going with a curve mag, it can make your life a whole lot easier. And they seem to overwork the skin a little less as well because they don't have those sharp corners that could really rip up the skin. So they are a very good mag to start out with. All right, so we'll get in with this actual tattoo. The first thing I'm gonna kind of explain would be how to go in and fill in an area completely. So I'm going to fill in a couple of these areas on these leaves with black. Now I wouldn't necessarily do this on an actual tattoo. This is just something I'm doing to be able to show you how it's done. So what we're going to do to do this is we're going to keep our mag in little circles. Now, if you do your circles too big, you're going to be able to see the little marks from the mag. So you wanna keep them small and close together. Another thing we wanna do is make sure that you're going at a steady hand speed and you kinda wanna get it done the first time. You don't wanna have to go back in and go over it multiple times because that's what could cause problems with healing and everything. So just going in there, small circles. Keeping a steady hand speed the whole time. And that completely fills in that area. I'll do that over here to show it to you again. So just keeping with the tiny circles. You'll be using this with like, um, you'll be using this method with like more of tribal, um, any big dark areas that you want to completely saturate. Another thing is, if you're doing this method, something to think about is not using lining black. Lining black's black super thin. So try to get like, you know, a black that's made for actual coloring. Um, it'll be thicker and it'll make it a whole lot easier to, you know, pack in there and make it super powerful and dark. Awesome. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go from this black and whip shade it out. So what we're going to do is start here 
and then just slowly work our way out. And we're not pressing super hard here, we're just going into the skin and just, you know, making sure the mags go into the skin and then when we're moving our hand, they're slowly working their way out of it. And that's what creates the different tones. As you can see. So we went from the straight black to showing transitions. So it's not just a super dark area and then nothing. Um, this is was a really hard kind of thing for me to learn when I first started out. What I was doing was kind of like blocking in all my shading. And it wasn't really um, looking smooth. You know, I'd do like this area like we just did. And it would just be a solid color. And then i go in with my gray wash and it would just be a solid color. So getting used to doing these things will help you a ton when you are actually tattooing. Okay, we're good to go with our black now and just do whip shading the other way. So we're not going to do a super dark place right here, we're just going to kind of whip it out. And we want this top leaf to be lighter because we did the bottom one so dark, so just quickly going over there, brushing that in. Let's check it out. Awesome, so that's exactly what we were looking for. Now we're going to go up to these top leaves real quick and get them out of the way. So I'm doing this whipping method right here. You can tell that the bottom of the leaves are kind of, you know, come to a point. So what I'm doing is starting out my mag kind of held to the side. And then when I like pull out, then I, you know, turn it and make the actual whip shading. So just kind of like this method, I'll show you real quick. So going like that and then just whipping it out. Now you don't want to do that a lot. Um, Cause if you're kind of going too slow over that area, you can really cut into the skin. So we're just going over that one time and then, you know, moving on to the next spot. So from here, what we're going to do is dip it in our six drops. And we're gonna go through and just kind of like block in some of the areas to where are going to be in the background and we want them a little bit darker. So just go through here, making our shading with our whipping method. down here as well. You'll get to see me doing it from a different angle here. So you can tell that the bigger the space is, kind of the more I'm whipping it out. If it's a big space I gotta get to, you know, I'm really, really being dramatic with that motion um, to get all the shading in there. do that the same down here when we kind of feather this out we're going to use the pendulum motion we're just trying to get our you know foundations of everything done with our dark areas and we'll go back in and make them lighter cleaned up so we can see what we're doing awesome so you can clearly see that this was all the whip shading method um you can see all the little dots in there now we're gonna go back through and show some pendulum shading so we'll get something a little bit lighter we'll dip in our three drop right here 
what we're gonna do is just kind of build off of what we just did and just working at this motion this time so instead of just putting it in and whipping it out we'll just Okay, so now with the brush shading, what we're going to do is we're going to do the same motion as kind of the pendulum shading, but what we're going to do is just, you know, very lightly go into the skin. We're just building up little tones. Um, we don't want them too powerful, so, you know, just very lightly and quickly going in and just building up. And this is the brush shading or feather shading. Um, this is how you do that. So now that we went through the different techniques, um, you know, our hand motion, all that stuff, um, and the best techniques for actually shading a tattoo, I'm going to speed up this video so you can still see me doing it and how I'm moving, and then we'll explain a little bit more at the end. Okay, so there we have the design um, fully done. We went through our different shading techniques when you're tattooing. And if you are having problems, you know, shading tattoos, all of those things, I hope this was able to help you out. Just to recap, we went through our whip shading. Then we went through and worked on our pendulum shading. Also worked on our cross hatching. Went through and learned how to brush shade as well. And then the last thing we learned would have been how to pack in a solid area. So if you're having problems with you know, shading or getting your transitions and everything. These are the steps you will need to take to get better and be able to do these things. Awesome, last thing I wanna to touch base on is what mags you're using for different things. So with this one, I used a standard mag. It was a curved mag, but I didn't use a bug pin or anything like that. If you're doing more realistic stuff or black and gray, so you want, you know, perfect transitions and the dots in the skin to be, you know, super smooth, you're gonna to wanna to get used to working with bug pins as well. And I'm sure I'll have more content um, going into the difference between the two in the future. So with this one, I hope this was able to help you out. And as always, if this helped you out in any way, just leave a like down below and follow for more videos. <laughs>